I'm gonna show you how to write your email follow-up sequence that sells. You know, no more just writing emails and not getting opens and not actually making sales. I'm gonna show you how to craft compelling, engaging content in your emails that's actually gonna get the sales. So stick around, you're gonna to wanna to see what's coming next. Yeah, is that on the dog and bar? Yo, what is up? Zachary Babcock here, former drug addict, spent over five years of my life in prison, turned underdog entrepreneur and the Prove Em Wrong prodigy, top 200 iTunes podcast host. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your business with customer acquisition and lead generation, make sure you hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notifications, that way you don't miss anything. With that being said, we're getting ready to dive into, I'm gonna show you how to write emails that actually actually sell, how to write an email sequence over the course of like maybe three to five to seven emails that's gonna build rapport with your curious prospect that doesn't really even know you yet probably and that's gonna build that relationship and also want to get them wanting to take the next step with you which is your first offer in your customer journey. So with all that being said, let's head to the computer screen and I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna show up, bust out the slide deck. Okay, this is a genius um, strategy that I learned from Russell Brunson out of his book, Dot Com Secrets, on how to um, write your email sequence when someone when someone opts into your email um, your email subscriber list. Maybe they opted in through a lead magnet where you're giving away something for free, or maybe they just purchased a front end offer. This sequence right here is a perfect way to onboard them and lead them to the next offer that you have, and it's very genius. Now, first, let's break down the concept of, the concept of this. It's called soap opera sequence for a reason because what happens in soap opera sequences uh, and, and soap opera shows um, at the end of the show, even at the before they go into commercial break, they leave you on a cliffhanger because you gotta come back and you gotta finish the story. And they've already built up an attractive character, and you're emotionally invested into these characters, and you gotta know what happens at the end of the story. Um, and so that's how they keep you hooked. They open up a loop and they don't close the loop until they come back. But before, whenever they close the loop, they open up another one, and that's what you want to do throughout the sequence. Um, every single email is like a commercial. And uh, at, at the end, you, you just always keep them coming back. So let's dive into the first one. Now, before, if you don't know how to set up a drip email sequence, I have made a video for that, which you could check. It's uh, at the top right of your corner right now. That's uh, how you easily set up a drip email sequence uh, inside a ClickFunnels so that you can do what we're about to do now. Now, this is the strategy on how to actually write it. So the first thing then would be day one, which would be set the stage. Now all you do in this is um, you set the stage for what's to come. You uh, quickly thank them for, for opting into your email uh, uh, sequence and you, you tell them what they can expect and what they're gonna get. And um, then you kinda wanna maybe tease out a little secret that you're gonna share with them in the next email on the, on the next day. For an example, um, for, um, if, if you're um, teaching people how to generate leads and, and, and get customers like I do, then you might want to say, you know, um, you know, if you're if you're a, a digital marketer and you're, and you're looking to get leads, you know, I, I discovered the secret that um, uh, allowed me to get 50 percent conversion rates on my on my landing page. And tomorrow I'm going to share with you exactly how I stumbled across this discovery. Make sure you check it out. The headline is going to be so and so. And then that is opening a loop right there, setting the stage. And uh, they're going to want to, if they're the target audience, your, your ideal audience, then they're going to want to come check that out. Now, day two, um, this is where we start introducing the attractive character. And if you haven't, if you don't know what an attractive character is, I also made an incredible video on that. It's in the top right corner of your screen. If you haven't watched that yet, go watch it right now and come back and finish this video. Cool. So um, the attractive character, you're going to start introducing it at this point. Uh, and you always start off with a story with high drama. You don't want to put people in a coma. You got to keep them like, you know, you start the story off like, oh, my God. Like for me, like if I was to start off a story about uh, overcoming my prison uh, experience, I'd be like, I was in an 8 by 10 cell and I just found out that my sister had passed away from a heroin overdose and I was, um, I, I couldn't talk to no one and I was trapped in there by myself and I was inside of my head and I didn't know, I had no sense of hope. Like that's starting at high drama. And then I can go back into the backstory uh, of what led me to prison and then go through that whole story and how I got out. Um, so, so you want to start with high drama, you know, get them hooked. 
and then go into the backstory back up, get them emotionally invested into your attractive character. Cause if they don't have, uh, if they don't have rapport with your character, they're not, they're not going to care what happens to you. And that means they won't come back and open up your emails. And then you talk about the wall that you hit in your business or the, 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 the confrontation, the obstacle, the thing that, um, you know, almost made you quit or whatnot. And then you talk about how uh, you hit that wall and then how you overcame it. But you don't tell them how you overcame it just yet because this is the same wall that they're going through. Now you're opening the loop for the next email for tomorrow. So you don't tell them how you overcame it. You say, you know, but I but I overcame it. Tomorrow's email, I'm going to show you exactly how I overcame it. Make sure you check it check it out. The headline's going to be so-and-so. And you see how this is working? We're we're closing loops and opening them in, in each email as we go through this. Now, day three... It's your big epiphany that you had, something that you never knew before or it might have been in front of your face the whole entire time and you just didn't notice, but it's like the aha moment that changed everything uh, in your business. And usually uh, your epiphany is also your core offer that you're offering to your audience. And then at this point, you can also make a push and put in a link to your offering um, because if you do this right, they're gonna they're gonna want that uh, aha moment like you had, and they're gonna click on it and hopefully buy as well. So you can put that in there, and you talk about how it's the one thing that that destroys all their other the doubts about not being able to get past that obstacle that your audience is currently going through. Like it solves that one thing. It it, it, it like this one thing knocks down all the objections. Um, you know, so you're gonna start introducing that, and you open it up that epiphany where you start saying tomorrow I'm going to share some of the hidden benefits that I didn't even know about this one thing. Um, so you close the loop and now you're opening it again for the next email for day four. Now day four is the hidden benefits. Now obviously there's going to be benefits of of your product like lead generation, customer acquisition. Yeah, yeah, sure, you're going to make a whole lot more money, which is awesome. But did you know that that's going to give you complete freedom to do exactly what you want and not have to live on live? You'll be able to live life completely 100% on your terms. That's a hidden benefit. And then you go you go and be like, yeah, with this you're going to be able to work from home. But did you also know that you're going to be able to travel whenever you want and um to to completely have that freedom that you've always desired. It's the hidden benefits, you know, that they may not um, think about right out the gate, but that your product and service gives them. And the benefits is what really sells. People don't really care about the features. Yeah, it's important to talk about them in certain points, but the benefits are the main thing. It's their problems, their pains, and their frustrations, and their desires um, that you want to really touch base on with this. And then you make a push to your core offer once again, like, you know, does that, does that sound cool? Those are pretty awesome, aren't they? Cool, you can go check out more about this with this link right here and get your own hidden benefits. And you push them there. And at this point, you don't have to, you know, have another loop open uh, because we're moving into the final day, which is day five, and it's urgency, and you make a uh, urgency call to action. Now, this... This is the final day of your soap opera uh, email sequence, the, the final day of the welcoming sequence. But this isn't the final time that you email them. Um, this is just like one final push to your offer uh, to get them to take action uh, if they're a good fit um, to, to get them going. But you, you still will be emailing uh, your list until they opt out, obviously. So with this, um, you, you want to make it. Um, you know, like high urgency, build ethical urgency of why they should take action right now on your offer and the benefits of doing it right now versus by not doing it and missing out, hit on the fear of missing out aspect of it. Now, um, I definitely encourage you to watch that video on the top right corner right now. Uh, that's Ethical Selling 101. I, t I break down how to, uh, how to sell anything to anyone by doing it ethically with killer copywriting. So that'll help you also construct these emails. But this is what you want to follow. This whole entire sequence right here, you want to introduce your, your attractive character like we talked about in a previous video. And you want to walk them through this sequence. And you'll notice that you'll have higher conversions uh, when you do this right. And if you have uh, an offer that is truly compelling to your ideal audience. And if you've identified your ideal audience, of course. I hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments below what was most helpful for you. Was it easy to implement? Let me know that in the comments. If it wasn't, if it sucked, uh, if it wasn't easy to implement, write down in the comments what about 
it sucked, what I left out, what I could improve upon. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit it with a thumbs down. Let me know that it sucked because I don't want to keep on making sucky videos and by you letting me know that it sucked, I know that I need to do something to unsuck. Uh, yeah, if that ever even made any sense. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel and you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your business with lead generation and customer acquisition, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notifications. That way you don't miss anything. And I'm going to see you on the next video but in the meantime if you want to check out something until then until the new one i'm gonna throw it at you right now see you soon we put them hours in to bring them dollars in uh -oh. it's that underdog empowerment we put them hours in to bring them dollars in my name is zachary Bell.